if you are new here my name is May and on this channel we love to talk about handbags a little bit of fashion inspiration and I throw in some travel vlogs from time to time so if you like that type of content I would love for you to consider subscribing down below I was recently reviewing my analytics and it does say that a ton of you keep coming back and watch the videos which I am totally grateful for but haven't subscribed yet to the channel so I would really appreciate it if you just took one quick second and went ahead and clicked that subscribe button down below. Today I wanted to get into a little bit of an in-depth video to an original video that I filmed back last year and that is in regards to the VAT refund process. If you did catch my most recent travel vlogs, you did notice that we visited Portugal, Spain and France and I was able to take advantage of the Euro being extremely low in order to do some luxury shopping. So. I wanted to go ahead and touch base on that video that I had previously filmed. I have two videos in regards to shopping overseas, especially for those of us that live in the States or outside of the European Union. So I'll make sure to link those two videos down below. This one here is not going to go into the basics per se. I'm going to get into some questions that I want to go ahead and add some more details to that I have answered in that previous video as well as sharing with you guys some new information that I gained from this current trip. So I personally love doing my luxury shopping overseas. Not only has the experience always been so enjoyable and I've dealt with super amazing people at the boutiques every time that I go and I shop in one of the boutiques abroad, but I also get to save a ton of money when shopping luxury in Europe. And one of the ways I get to do that is by claiming VAT refund in all of my overseas purchases. So if you don't know what the VAT refund is, it is a value added tax that is added to these luxury pieces when you shop abroad. It is added to a whole list of goods, but for this particular video, I will be just focusing on luxury goods and explaining to you how it is that you can claim that tax back. So as a foreigner traveling overseas, you do not need to pay that additional tax that is already added in the price that you pay once you buy your good. So when you are leaving the European Union, you are allowed to claim a certain percentage of that tax that was already added to that good. Hopefully that all makes sense, but as always, and as I mentioned in that previous video, go ahead and leave me any comments or any questions that you may have in regards to what I'm talking about today. And of course, I'll try to answer it to best of my knowledge. You will see me looking down a lot because I have a lot of notes written down. I wanted to make sure I was as thorough as I possibly could be in this video. So once you leave the European Union, you did the entire process that you need to do in order to get your VAT refund returned to you. And now you're entering the US. In order to enter the US, you are allowed to bring a total of $800 of goods per person in your family without having to claim any of those goods. However, if you do go over that $800 threshold, then you do have to go ahead and claim those goods. And this is all a case by case scenario. I've seen people that have had to pay for every single purchase that they're bringing into the States. I've seen people that have walked right through customs and have not had to pay a penny. So as I said, this is a case by case. But over those $800 that you are allowed to bring in, then you would have to pay an additional 3% of import fees coming into the States. Now really quick, I did want to get into the $800 threshold that you are allowed to claim once you're coming back into the States. When you fill out your customs declaration form coming back into the States, this $800 is per person within your family. So let's say whenever we travel, Rudy and I are a family because we live under the same household. So for our case, we would be able to claim up to $1,600 of goods without having to pay any additional import fees on. So if you are a household of four, let's say, that means that you get to bring in $3,200 without having to pay any additional fees on. Now, as I said, that first video that I did film goes in a lot deeper into the basics and what the steps are. So I won't be getting into that information in this video. I want to go ahead and focus on questions that I asked that I felt needed a little bit more of an in-depth answer to or just share key information that I continue to learn as I continue to travel abroad and I want to make sure that you guys are aware of as well. So I always get asked whether I do my purchases with a debit card, a credit card or in cash. 
I prefer to go the credit card route because one, I get points for every purchase that I make. And then once I make it back home, I make sure to clear out that credit card. And then two, it is a lot easier for me to get my refunds in my credit card. You also get a higher percentage than you would if you would choose to get your refunds in cash. So for that reason, I always do my purchases with my credit card and I have the VAT refund refunded to that same credit card that I did the purchases with. Keep in mind when you choose to get your VAT refund on your credit card, the process is a lot simpler in the sense that once you get your forms stamped and you send them off, you just go ahead in through the security and you're free to roam until you get your flight. If you choose to have your VAT refund given to you in cash, you have to get your forms stamped by the customs offices. And then once you get through security, you do have to head over to the VAT refund kiosk in order to get your refund in cash. That line, from what I have seen over the periods of times that I have traveled abroad, can be very lengthy. So if this is the route that you choose to go with, make sure that you have allotted time in order to do this whole process. I would say anywhere between three to three and a half, maybe even four hours ahead of your scheduled flight time, just because you want to make sure that you're one, not rushing through the process and two, not running through the gate in order to catch your flight before it leaves you behind. Okay. One question that I got a lot in that previous video was, if I fly into Paris and then I'm taking a train to Spain and then I'm catching a flight out of Istanbul, where is it that I fill out my VAT refund forms? And that is a great question. We sometimes get confused what countries are part of the European Union. So I would just make sure that you Google that information before you choose your departure destination. But regardless, if you are departing from a country that is not part of the European Union, let's say in this case, it would be Turkey, then you want to make sure that you fill out all your paperwork and that you send it off in the last country that you are in that is part of the European Union. So even if you are catching a train, for the most part, these countries will have either a kiosk or a small office that offers that service for you because they know that some people will be traveling in train in order to go ahead and visit another country. So here's an example. Let's go ahead and say you're flying into Spain and from Spain, you're going to catch a train over to Portugal. And then from Portugal, you're going to catch a flight into Turkey. And from Turkey, you're catching a flight back home into the States where you are going to go ahead and file all of your VAT refund forms and send off is in Portugal, which is the last European Union destination that you will be in before heading back home. All right. Another question that I wanted to address was, can you wear the item or how and where do you pack your purchases? I'm going to go ahead and put these two questions into one answer. Now, as I went ahead and did some research, the website itself says that you should not be wearing the items. You should have them in the original packaging in case the customs officers do ask you to show the pieces. I personally will tell you that there have been various times where I am using one of the purchases that I've made and I've never had any problems with that. So once again, I want to say that this is a case by case scenario. It really depends what kind of officer you get, or if you even have to go ahead and submit your papers through an actual officer for the most part, you scan them. And if you get a green check mark, you're pretty much good to go. Now I don't bring back shopping bags or boxes. They just take up way too much space in my luggage. So what I do is once I make my purchases, I remove the pieces and I just keep them in either their small dust bag that they come in or if they do come in a small box that I can go ahead and pack into my suitcase and won't take up a lot of space. I keep it like so, but I never bring back any of my shopping bags and for the most part, none of my boxes either. And as I said, I've never had any issues. If I am being asked to show any of my pieces, I go ahead and just bring out the dust bag, show whatever is inside and I'm good to go. Another question that I wanted to address is if you do need to send off the receipt with your VAT refund purchase forms. And the answer is you do not. The receipts are for you to keep as your proof of purchase. And some boutiques will actually give you an additional VAT refund form for you to have as a copy as well. 
So when you do go ahead and scan the forms and either mail them out or need to show them to the officer at the customs station, you do not need to show or give them the receipts of the purchases. You just need to show that form that was given to you at the boutique in order for them to see what it is that you're asking the VAT refund for. Now, here's a really good one that I got, and that is if I don't report it coming into the States, will it affect the VAT refund submitted at the European Union? The plain and simple answer is no, it is two separate transactions. So the VAT refund is done before leaving the European Union, that's transaction number one. And the second transaction is once you get in and you are asked in your custom sheets to report or declare any goods that you're bringing into the States, that is transaction number two. However, keep in mind that if you do not report the goods that you are bringing into the States, you could get a huge fine if for whatever reason the officer wants to go ahead and inspect your luggage and you said that you didn't have anything to declare, but you do. So just keep that in mind. As I said, this is all a case by case. Another question is, what if I left the European Union and didn't fill out any paperwork or didn't submit any of my paperwork for the VAT refunds? Can I do that once I make it back into the States? And unfortunately, you cannot. All of this paperwork must be filled out, completed and submitted before you leave the last place in the European Union that you will be at before coming into the States. Another really, really good question that I got was, can I exchange the items once I get back into the States? And I haven't gone through this personally. However, I know my sister-in-law once purchased something and did go to the store in order to exchange it. I have to say from what she told me about her experience, it was horrible. They didn't want to exchange it because it wasn't bought in that boutique. I think they gave her a really low exchange rate because they're not going to give you the price that you paid for in the European Union. They're going to basically do the interchange and they're probably going to charge you that import fee because obviously it is a piece that comes from overseas. So I really think that you'll be losing at the end if you do choose to exchange or to return something that you buy overseas. So my biggest advice to you would be do your research on this piece that you want to add. Make sure that it is something that you do want to add and that you are going to use and that you've really been wanting to have in your collection so that you 99.9% .9 are sure that once you come back into the States, you don't want to return it because I really don't think that that process is going to be very smooth whatsoever. Another question is, do I need to have my physical passport with me? And this is a yes and no. I personally have a date that I try to designate in order to do all my luxury shopping so that I don't have to carry my passport with me at all times. However, there are times when I go into a boutique, I see something that I like and I wanted to purchase and I don't have the physical passport with me at that time. I always ask if they'll take a picture and for the most part, independently standing boutiques will take a picture. I have noticed that department stores that carry boutiques inside and then you do have to do the VAT refund process once you finish your shopping in that department store. For example, El Corte Inglés in Spain or Portugal and then there is Galleries Lafayette and Printum in Paris. These, you basically do your shopping in their boutiques within that standing department store. And then once you're done, you do have to go to a designated area where you go ahead and submit all of your receipts. They'll fill out the VAT refund form for you. They need to physically scan your passport. And then this is the form that you will take with you in order to do the process of the VAT refund when you're in the airport. For those in particular, they definitely ask you for the physical passport at all times. If you caught my previous VAT refund video, you will know that I did have to go through this when I actually purchased something in Louis Vuitton. The lady needed the actual passport, but she was really nice. She was able to hold all the pieces for us and we were able to go the next day in order to pick them up and then be able to do that VAT refund with the physical passport. So unfortunately, this isn't a 100% yes or no answer. There are boutiques that will definitely take your picture, no questions asked, as long as everything is up to date. However, from my experience, the big department stores that hold a lot of boutiques inside 
will require you to have the physical passport just because the forms that they fill out are done a little bit different than they are done in these particular standalone boutiques. Now, some new information that I did gather from this recent trip that I did is that not every country has a minimum threshold that you need to spend in order to claim a VAT refund on. For example, Spain has no limit whatsoever. So even if you go into Louis and you find a piece for $80, which if you do, please let me know what that piece is. You can definitely claim the VAT refund taxes on that. So there are other countries that do have a specific threshold. For example, we did go into Portugal and their minimum was $150 wherever it was that we were shopping. So keep that in mind. Maybe do a little bit of research of the country that you're going to be visiting before you make it there to see how much it is that you need to spend in order to claim back those taxes. Something else that I did pick up from this trip is that not every country will have as smooth of a process as other places. For example, when I filmed that first VAT refunds video, we were coming back from Paris and in Paris, the process is just so smooth. You scan your forms and if you get a green check mark in those kiosks that are designated for that, you're good to go. You don't even have to put the forms in an envelope and send them off. However, this time around, our last destination before the States was Spain. And in Spain, it was totally different. If you had forms from purchases that you had done in Spain, they had a kiosk that you can go ahead and scan those forms. But if you had done purchases in anywhere else in the European Union outside of Spain, you still had to make the line and see the customs officer. So this actually took a little bit longer than I initially was expected. As I mentioned, when I'm doing VAT refund paperwork, I always add about an hour to an hour and a half on top of what I was initially thinking about making it to the airport just for this reason, in case there's a hiccup or something comes up that is a little bit unexpected and I just needed to have a little bit more time for. Another change that I have seen that they are coming out with and that is giving you a temporary credit of your VAT refund right away. Some boutiques are doing this. This actually happened to us in our latest trip to Italy. We shopped in Burberry and I think it was Longchamp. I'm not too sure which the exact boutiques were, but we did do a little bit of shopping in the Florence outlets. I'll make sure to link that video down below for you. And we did get that temporary credit on our credit card the next morning. However, you still need to send off the forms once you leave the European Union. They give you the credit and it lasts, I think, seven business days or 10 business days. And then if they don't receive the forms within that time period, they actually debited our account again for the credit that was given. And then a few days later, they went ahead and credited it because they received the forms. So that's another thing to keep in mind. These refunds can take up to almost 30 days to 45 days. So about a month to a month and a half. All right, you guys, so that does it for this video. I hope it wasn't too, too long, but I wanted to get in depth into some of the questions that I got asked in my previous video. If you wanna go into the hardcore basics of VAT refund or how to calculate your savings when shopping in Europe versus shopping here in the States, I'll make sure to have those two videos linked down below for you guys so you can go ahead and check them out. Now, if you have a question that I haven't answered, whether it's on this video or on my first video that I did film in regards to the VAT refund, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to get that answer for you. Now, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And as always, thank you guys so, so much for taking some time out of your day to watch and I hope to catch you all in my next one. Bye everyone.